well, in my age group, you have a lot of people who get Alzheimer's and you're just more aware of it. That's why Diana Reimer is willing to put her gaming skills to the test. Well, I'm trying to go through a maze. So. And how are you doing? <laughs> I don't know, failing grade. <laughs> it's not just Reimer. This thing is harder than it looks. Up the stairs with the wheelchair. And then you know that I need to now go to the right. And I should have my triangle. There it is. Good job. In the end, Reimer and I are scoring well for our age categories. We would be part of the control group because neither of us have been diagnosed with any type of dementia. Those that have been diagnosed struggle through the test. In my opinion, the, one of the very first early signs of uh, dementia starts with deterioration, significant deterioration of a spatial memory. That spatial memory is what Dr. Zara Musavi calls the egocentric orientation. It's like an inner compass and in Musavi's opinion, the key to early detection of Alzheimer's and other types of dementia. She tests people's spatial memory in a virtual world, free of the landmarks we use to orient ourselves in the everyday. Once you enter a door, you enter a new environment, uh, you have to reorient yourself, you have to recalculate, like, okay, where is the target? We perturb this landmark by making the house square, making the house to look the same from everywhere, and also to provide a stairs and two floors. Um, because when you go to the stairs, you have to turn. Therefore, you have to rely on your egocentric orientation capability in order to navigate and find the target. Each time a test subject reaches the target, Musavi gets closer to the results she's searching for. And she's not alone in her findings. They, they say some people uh, are lucky in research, and I think I am at times. When Brian Lithgow started tests using his EVSG technology, he was looking at diseases of the balance system. He found out that the technology is also sensitive to early changes in the brain that occur with diseases like Alzheimer's. When we put our electrode, which is this thing, in the ear canal, we're very, very close to, this is an expander view, these nerves. So we're picking up a signal that's not degraded by the thickness of the skull. Through a series of twists and turns, Lithgow is measuring how well the brain performs in response to these movements. As you can see by the graph, there is a big difference in response between the control group and those who have dementia. It, what it's representing is how much change there is in going from sitting still to being tilted. And this is actually a measure of the change. So you'll see with a control group, there's a large change but the dementia group, it's much smaller. The dementia and control groups are separating themselves on the graph in the same way they did in Musavi's wheelchair test. It's encouraging news for the two groups of researchers striving to find a diagnostic tool for Alzheimer's. We have two independent parallel approach to diagnose something that there is no gold standard. And if our results are congruent with each other, therefore it is like a cross validation Here's an example. One of the participants in the EVSG study was put in the control group, even though her doctor suggested that she may actually be displaying early signs of dementia. Her EVSG results were low, and Musavi wants to know if her own study will verify what the EVSG is suggesting. Her data, her plot, which is um, shown by a triangle there, is right at the boundary, which means that therefore EVSG seems to be also sensitive at the onset of the dementia. There are a couple of controls that are also close to the boundaries, closer to the patient's group. In fact, um, I would like to have them tested with the uh, wheelchair virtual house and see if that is being also confirmed by that. Lithgow and Musavi are on to some exceptional findings, but like other research around Alzheimer's, it's not getting out to the public. There is not a huge amount in the easily accessed literature about what's going on in research. Um, and I think it's because it's a very difficult disease to 
localized to a particular cause. What happens in Alzheimer's disease is it's not necessarily affecting the same part of the brain in every different person. What is common is a late diagnosis when it is often too late to help the patient. To further their studies, they need more people willing to be diagnosed at an early stage. And even I have to admit that if I had early signs of Alzheimer's, part of me wouldn't want to know. But there are benefits to early detection. The good news is that our brain is plastic. It is possible that by engaging ourselves in the new activity, in new learning activity, not in repetitive activities, but in something that is challenging and new, uh, it is possible that we sharpen our memory, it's possible to uh, delay the onset of dementia or a slow the progress. That's exactly the reason why volunteers like Diana Reimer are taking part in these studies. Lithgow and Musavi are looking for others. You can contact them through Riverview Health Center or through Dr. Musavi directly by emailing musavi at cc.umanitoba.ca. For Shaw TV, I'm Kim Kasher.